I'm here at the Biotech and Money Conference with Josh Blatcher, CFO at Therapix Biosciences. Welcome, Josh. Thank you so much. Uh, first question, sum up your business for us. Uh, excellent question. We are treating central nervous system related disorders, neurological disorders, with a tried and true, uh, approved, proven system that is called cannabinoids uh, for relief, especially of uncontrollable tics for Tourette's patients. This has been something that has been proven clinically since the early 90s, and we know that up to 50% of the adult population that suffers from Tourette's, uh, Tourette's syndrome actually self-medicates themselves with cannabis. What we are doing is taking that, taking the social stigma of, away from that, and putting into a non-psychoactive once-a-day pill, right, that provides the neurological uh, related uh, benefits without the psychoactive high or the euphoria that somebody that is smoking cannabis is doing. And when you say cannabinoid, you're re referring to the positive medicinal effects of cannabis, right? Cannabinoids refers to a system that we have in our body, actually. The body knows what cannabinoids are, kind of like cannabis, and that's why the body reacts so positively to medicinal cannabis in many ways, for pain, for nausea, for vomiting, and now for all sorts of neurological related disorders. Um, but since this system is innate within our body, we have what's called an endocannabinoid system. Our body actually produces uh, 40 to 50 endocannabinoids or quasi-cannabinoids in your body that go to particular receptors and they do all sorts of interesting things, but one of them is deal with neurological related issues, twitching, ticking, seizures, things of that nature. So what we're doing is we are synthetically conjugating, we don't touch the cannabis plant, we don't want to. Synthetically conjugating, yes. what is that? We draw very interesting uh, structures of the molecules, of what the psychoactive components of the molecules are, specifically THC in our case, and we produce it in, you know, in a vial or in a petri dish. Um, and we come up with a uh, sort of a conjugate of THC that has nothing to do with the cannabis plant itself, other than it has the same molecular structure. And where are you in terms of your clinical trials and so on? Yeah, we're running a phase 2A trial for Tourette's syndrome at Yale University. Um, it's an 18-person open-label trial. It's almost completely, re, uh, uh, completely um, randomized at this point. We have 17 of the 18 patients. The, uh, the 18th should be within the next week or two. And then uh, there's going to be a, another three and a half weeks until we have our data readout. The other uh, clinical study that we're running right now, which is perhaps even more interesting um, than Tourette's syndrome is an obstructive sleep apnea. Right now, sleep apnea, there is no therapeutic approach. Uh, the only thing that people do for the sleep apnea is they put this gigantic hockey mask over their face. It's called the CPAP machine. And the CPAP machine is the best that the industry has right now. We have a therapeutic approach, which is take a, you know, a pill before bedtime and you help yourself go to sleep without, uh, so to speak, inducing you know, sleep through a, a traditional sleeping pill, which is knocking you out. That's not what we're doing. We're subduing the nerves and things like that, so you're able to sleep uh, effectively and, and, and long-lasting. What, what is the market size uh, for Tourette's? What's the market size for a sleep apnea? Yeah. Yeah. So Tourette's, we think, in the United States alone, combined with what we call chronic tic disorder is about a billion and a half. And there are uh, three approved drugs for Tourette's. All of them are highly toxic. Um, most of them, I think maybe even all of them, have black, black box labels from the FDA. Um, and so we think we're gonna be able to make a lot of noise in that market space in very quick order. And then the sleep apnea is much, much bigger. We think it could be up to 100 times bigger or up to $150 billion. Uh, if you sort of think about the lack of productivity and effectiveness, people that suffer from sleep apnea have at work on top of the therapies, or not the therapies, the uh, devices that are used in the market right now. Whereabouts are you with FDA approval? Okay, so after our phase 2A study that we're running in both studies, um, we will approach the FDA and see if that is sufficient data to go directly to pivotal studies where we would be approved shortly thereafter. Or there, you know, is a more likely approach would we'd have to do an interim study that's called a phase 2B 
um, until they get comfortable uh, with the data such that we could do the pivotal study. But all of that should be wrapped up within about three years and we're looking at bringing these drugs to market in 2020 or 2021. You're listed on NASDAQ? We are. So um, what's, the, what's the, uh, the share cap at the moment? What's sure. the share price? And so that's a great question, thanks for asking. That's what, you know, um, the street simply doesn't understand that we have three shots on multi-billion dollar goals. Our market cap is, let's call it 17 million. We have $12 million in the bank, which means you're really buying us for $5 million. The enterprise value of $5 million, and you have access to uh, a first-in-class treatment for Tourette's, sleep apnea, uh, and a couple of others. You have an interim CEO. When will you be appointing a full-time person? We have um, put in as an interim CEO Asher Shmulowitz, who's uh, a very well-credentialed entrepreneur, uh, practicing physician, um, has had several successful exits, and he was the founding investor in our company. So he is plug and play until the right uh, person in our search comes to comes to the surface. Why is it tough to find a good C, uh, CEO? It's, it sounds like a great business to me. It, it is a great business, but we want the full package. We're not looking to compromise, um, and uh, we have a good uh, medical staff and financial staff, and so we just need we need to find the right fit for the company. And finally, what are your clinical and operational objectives for 2018? Okay, so we have um, between now and the third quarter of 2018 four. Um, important studies that are going on for clinical studies um, in sleep apnea, Tourette's, mild cognitive impairment, and traumatic brain, brain injury, as well as antibacterial resistance. All of those are going to have data readouts uh, within the next three to nine months. So that's phenomenal. A small company like ours, 10 people running three clinical, four clinical trials, that's really uh, impressive. Operational, there's really not much to talk about. Um, we have 10 people in our company, uh, everything is outsourced. Both of these drugs have already been approved, so we are repurposing them, and our IP is based on uh, not composition of matter, but the combination of the repurposed molecules. Um, and so, you know, this is not a big, elaborate, high-tech company that gobbles up millions and billions of dollars. We're, you know, we are money good with our $12 million into the end of next year. Very briefly. In terms of that pipeline, which is the most likely winner out of those uh, three or four different I'm trials? I'm actually going to bet on the sleep apnea right now. Um, I think uh, we have a great scientific foundation for it. There's a huge, huge unmet medical need, and there's nothing out there in the marketplace right now. So my money is on sleep apnea. Okay. Uh, Josh Blatcher, thank you very much indeed. Thanks so much.